Um, yeah. So what I'm going to be speaking about is our work on aligning and on centering the atomic graphic projections um, that we use in order to reconstruct 3D volumes. Um, my talk is based on a joint work with Nir Sharon and Amit uh, Singer. And it's going to have a few parts. I'm going to start with a short background, which I think all of you probably uh, already know. And then that's our idea for aligning projection images um, regardless of their angle of projection. Um, the connection of that to the center of mass, and then the problem with estimating center of mass in these noisy projections um, that we have from cryo-electron microscopy. And then I'll discuss our methods and uh, results. So the pipeline for cryo-electron microscopy, I assume you're all familiar with, it looks something like this with a few variations. Um, first comes motion correction. The raw data that we get um, are usually frames, each frame taken with a very short exposure time and some motion um, of the ice and of the molecules in between the different frames. Motion correction corrects for the motion and sums them in order to reduce some noise and takes every set of these uh, frames and creates one experimental micrograph, um, like you see on the right here. Once we have a set of micrographs, uh, what we try to do is to detect each projection in the micrograph and extract a stack of projections. Um, on the one hand, on the other hand, before particle picking, after particle picking, or concurrently with particle picking, we do CPF estimation, uh, where due to the uh, scattering density of the molecules and of the ice that the molecules are embedded within, we have to take the images uh, out of focus. So what we do here is try to identify uh, the distortion caused by this out of focus imaging so that we can correct for it as much as possible. Uh, once we do all that, uh, we do 2D or 3D class averaging in which we, in 2D class averaging at least, we align similar projections and sum over them, average them in order to get clean projections. Um, and the idea is that all of these sort of ugly uh, classes, averages, should be made of outliers. And what we do here is we just get rid of them in this stage so that we continue to the 3D reconstruction with particles um, that we're pretty sure are actual projections and good projections. Now, in order to do 3D reconstruction, uh, we use the Fourier slice theorem also known as the projection slice theorem, which tells us that the Fourier transform of the tomographic projections are central slices in the 3D Fourier transform of the molecule. And this is important to us because it gives us a method for reconstruction. And what we want to do is we want to fill this whole uh, 3D, the Fourier space of this 3D object with all our central slices kind of fill it in and get our reconstruction. Now, one problem uh, with this method is that if our projections are not per perfectly aligned, um, so because of the shifting property of Fourier transforms, the Fourier transform of a shifted projection is actually a modulation of the Fourier transform of the original projection. Um, so that actually means that we do get from all of our projections a lot of central slices, but each is a central slice in a possibly slightly different 3D Fourier space. Now this problem is certainly not insurmountable. 
especially considering that the size of the absolute value of, a, of the exponent is one. Um, but we started thinking of, can we kind of fix this problem and make sure that all of our uh, projections, all the Fourier transform of all of our projections are central slices in the same 3D Fourier transform. So uh, as a spoiler, I'm going to tell you that we weren't actually able to do that, but we did get very nice results um, that in and of themselves, I think, will help uh, with the reconstruction. So in order to do the alignment, um, what we wanted to do is find a single point in the 3D uh, molecule and find the projection of that single point in each of the tomographic projections, each of the projections uh, that we chose in the particle picking stage. Uh, if we had that one point, we could actually align all the particles and then their Fourier transform really would be central slices of in, in the same 3D object. Um, so in order to choose that point, we chose the center of mass. Uh, the reason being that the center of mass of an object, 3D object, is actually projected to the center of mass of each of its 2D tomographic projections. Um, the problem is finding center of mass in very noisy data. Um, in order to discuss the problem, I'll just discuss what the center of mass is to begin with. Mm, sorry, once again. Okay. <clears throat> so the center of mass of a set of points, or in our case, it would be just the pixels, um, and associated non-negative weights, which in our case is the pixel values, is just their weighted average. An alternative and, for our purposes, better definition um, is the center of mass as the minimizer of the Frechet variance, which is what you see here. The only problem with this definition is um, the square of the distance actually causes a very high sensitivity to extreme points. Okay, because of this, uh, in 2008, Fletcher and Others uh, suggested using the geometric medium as an estimate for the center of mass. This is basically the same, um, okay, basically it's the same estimate of the center of mass, except we took off the square. So now it's the Frechet medium. And this is actually more robust to noise than the center of mass itself. Discuss some of the problems. Um, I have a porcupine here. The origin of the image is right here, and its center of mass is marked in red. And what we did is we added noise in each image, more and more noise. And as you can see, the estimate of the center of mass just sort of migrates to the origin as the noise starts to dominate the image. So in projections um, in cryo-electron microscopy, because of the high levels of noise, trying to find the center of mass, according to this uh, minimizer, would always find us the origin of our projection. The geometric median actually fares better, but only with noise that has zero mean. Once the mean of the noise is higher than zero, then it too is going to have the, the estimate of the center of mass migrate towards the origin of the image as the noise grows. So because of this, we figured we need a new estimate for a center of mass. And we do need this estimate to be as robust as possible to noise. So thinking how to make our estimate robust to noise, we decided to do the same thing that we do also in um, 2D class averaging, just sum over pixels of noise. Because if you sum the noise, you're going to reduce its variance. And if you sum over the pixels of the projection itself, you're going to increase the SNR. 
that we don't actually, in any projection images, we don't have too much to sum over. Um, so what we do is we do rotational averages with the idea that if we're doing a rotational average, certainly towards the, the far ends of our projection image, we're going to, to reduce the noise a lot. Um, and then there's also the, what I'm going to show here is clean images, but, but I'll show the, the intuition behind our method and then, and then the method itself. If we put our porcupine right in the middle of the image and we do these nine random shifts of the porcupine, hey, most of the same pixels in the center of the image are still going to be related to the porcupine. So this here is the sum of these nine projections. And as you can see, basically all of this area is covered by the porcupine, no matter its rotation. And what you see here is the sum of all possible rotations of this porcupine. So we have this sort of compact little disk of, uh, of mass. And then around it, nothing. Okay, because the porcupine kind of ends. But if we were to take our porcupine and shift him and then rotate, so suddenly our different rotations um, are completely different, very far away from each other. So if we sum over our nine rotations, what we have here is this big disk. Okay, or if we sum over all rotations, we have again this big disk with a much larger radius, which very slowly goes down to zero. Um, so the idea here is basically we're throwing out a lot of information. Okay, we're just keeping uh, the rotational average. It's just basically a vector. But what I'm going to show soon is that the information that we throw out is information we didn't even need um, in order to compute the center of mass. And what we do want to do is we want to take these rotational averages and we want to compare them to what we call a delta image, which is basically just an image with all the mass in its center. So if we were to compare this image to a delta image, Okay, we, we'd be pretty close, or at least much closer than comparing this image. Also because the center has more mass, but also because the edges have much less mass. Okay. So what we uh, suggest is a surrogate function for the center of mass. And the surrogate function looks like this. Okay, so again, it, we're, we're looking for a minimizer. Uh, but what we want to minimize is basically the difference between our uh, rotational average and the delta image. So in order to do this, what we have here is we're running over all uh, circles in all possible radiuses until we get to the radius of the object, or more if we want more. And we take Emax, which is the entire mass of the object or the entire mass of the projection image, the object on the noise. And then we remove from it at the first stage, we remove from it the center. And then we add to that all the mass of the object and we remove from it a circle in radius two around the origin. And we add to that all the mass and we remove a circle in radius three around the origin and so on. If we were to find the minimizer of this function, we'd actually be pretty close to the center of mass. And uh, we'll show under certain conditions, we actually do find the geometric median. Okay, so what we did, I'm not gonna put the proofs here, but each of the theorems that I'll give, we did prove um, in our paper. So the first thing that we prove is that if you take the landscape of our function, meaning you take this part of the function and you sort of draw it out for yourself, uh, meaning in each pixel, you, you take this, these circles in bigger uh, radius around that pixel and you compute all the, the mass in the projection image minus these circles, um, assuming that you have a clean image containing just a zero object, a, a single object, 
our uh, landscape of our function will ha will have definitely a local minimum that coincides with the geometric median, but we define the geometric median, the distance in the geometric median, not as a local, the, the normal L2 distance, but as the rounding up of the L2 distance. Um, because we're talking about discrete pixels. Okay. And next, we also show that not only is it guaranteed to be a local minimum, but under a pretty uh, easy to fulfill condition, the geometric median will also be the global minimum of, uh, of our function in a non-noisy image. Okay, which basically means what we wanted to do is we wanted to estimate the center of mass. And we already know that the geometric median is a good estimate for the center of mass. Uh, so what we're showing is in all the cases where the geometric median works well, which means there's no noise, we actually will coincide with the geometric median. And the difference between us and the geometric median is that we're more robust to noise, because that's just how we built our, our function. Um, so in the cases where the geometric median fails, we still should succeed to find, or at least to give a good estimate of the center of mass. Okay, so so far this was just about sort of aligning all the 3D um, projection images. And to make this sort of alignment that doesn't just align similar images, which is what we do in 2D classification, uh, but aligns all the images regardless of their projection direction. But when working on the apple picker years ago, um, I found that sometimes what the particle picker returns the apple picker, and later I saw that this also happens for different particle pickers. It kind of returns um, a location which isn't really one particle. It's somewhere in between two particles. Um, and then what happens is usually these images, at least in my experience, get thrown out in the 2D classification stage because they're found to be outliers. Um, so that's why we, we kind of check what would happen with these, uh, with our um, surrogate function in the case of two objects. Oh, sorry, I forgot this one. This was just showing that uh, we do coincide with the geometric um, medium. So this is basically, we took a hedgehog, we shifted it, we, um, we computed the geometric median on our estimate for all possible radiuses. Um, and as soon as the radius gets to the radius of the hedgehog, okay, we exactly coincide with, with the geometric median. Um, okay, sorry. So returning to our uh, idea of what if there are actually two projections in the projection images, image, uh, we find that our surrogate function can ignore the second projection. So what we proved is in the noiseless case, um, assuming we have a full projection and a part of another projection, uh, we give two conditions. First, we have a condition on distance, the geometric median of the entire object, the entire projection has to be at least the radius of the projection away uh, from our second partial object, okay, which is a fine assumption because if it isn't, so the objects are actually glued and we want to throw them out anyway. So in the case of this assumption isn't upheld, nothing we can do will make that projection worthwhile. And the other projection is an intensity assumption, uh, which basically means the, the, set, the ball of radius R around the center of mass of our entire projection um, is actually the ball of radius R with the most mass in the entire image. So again, it's a pretty logical assumption. So under these conditions, um, the center of mass will give the, 
the fresh M, the minimizer of the fresh variance will give a incorrect um, solution. The fresh median, the geometric median, will also give an incorrect uh, solution, but our surrogate function will give the same solution as it would have given if we didn't have that second partial object. Um, okay, so basically what it means is we can have several objects pretty close together, and we're still going to be able to find each and every one of them in the noiseless case. So this is uh, also examples. What I have here is a single hedgehog and the geometric medium. Um, and this is our, our solution. So the minimizer of our solution is right here where you would expect. Okay, but when there are three hedgehogs, the geometric median just shifts to kind of the middle of all the hedgehogs. Um, but on the other hand, our solution, okay, we still have three very distinct minimas, minima, um, which will allow us to find them even if we don't know the number of objects that we had in our image to begin with. Um, in order to be fair, I also added another column here. And this column is the geometric median, but what we did is we ignore everything that happens after a radius of r of every point. Uh, okay, because the geometric median basically takes into account all the pixels in the image. But our function doesn't. So it was kind of a handicap of geometric median. So we said, let's kind of compare it, but we'll give the geometric median the same um, handicap. And we'll say, you know, look for the minimizer, but only consider what happens in a ball of R pixels of radius R away from you. Okay, and what you can see is you, you do have three sort of local minimas where, the, where you would expect, but what you can't really see here and we saw in the actual image is that there's a lot of spurious minima that happen um, due to the fact that actually everything outside, right, of the hedgehogs is the real minimum. So sort of if you take into account what happens here, you're, you're kind of, you might get this, uh, this minimum that, that doesn't belong. Yeah, but if you knew to begin with that you only had three hedgehogs, um, this sort of local geometric medium that we use here will give you the locations of the three hedgehogs. Um, but if you didn't know going into it how many objects you're looking for, only our function uh, will allow you to know that and to identify the, the geometric median of each one. Okay, but uh, you know, we're talking not about hedgehogs, but about cryo-electron microscopy. So I took a image um, from Empire, from the 10017 data set, and I took two projections. So this here is a first projection. I don't know if you see it. Um, and here is a second projection. And in black, I have the origin. So if we would take a regular projection image, like we do um, after particle picking, the projection image would just contain parts of each of the projections. Okay, so con uh, computing the center of mass of this image, we actually found the origin. Computing the local geometric median, we found uh, just the edge of the image. Okay, but with our centering, we were able to, to focus on exactly one of the projections, which actually tells us that if we do start from an image like this, which will probably be thrown out in 2D class averaging, but we use our centering method, so we're going to be able to save one of these two projections. Uh, which means we'll be able to use more projection images for the reconstruction. Which is why I said in the beginning, we weren't actually able to find the exact center of mass of each of the uh, projection images. Um, but we did find this, which is a very encouraging uh, result, I think. So in order to test our method, uh, what we did is we took 
data sets from Empire that actually have picked particles. Um, and then we took these picked particles and we computed a reconstruction. And we reconstructed everything, both with our centering and without our centering. Um, so for the Empire 10028 data set, we took the picked particles, we ran our centering, then we did 2D classification, 3D classification, and uh, 3D refinement in Relyon. And uh, we found that, first of all, after the 3D refinement, Relyon uh, outputs a star file, which allowed us to compute the distance between the center of the original projection images and the correct center from the reconstruction. Okay, and the center of the projection images after our centering and the, the true centers uh, found during the reconstruction. So we were able to get closer <clears throat> to the center of the images. Okay, so in the mean, the mean shift, the original projection images was 16 pixels away from the true center and in ours 10 pixels away. Uh, and the median shift was 14 pixels away in the original uh, projection images and in ours nine pixels away. Um, but besides that, it also reduced the runtime for the 3D refinement by a lot. Um, and I think the reason for that is, is that, um, although again, we are talking about slices and different um, sort of different 3D um, in the Fourier space, uh, 3D objects, since we were able to center a lot of them, I think that more projections did belong kind of to the same 3D object. And uh, still the, the, the exponentials, the complex exponentials were smaller because the, the distance was smaller. <laughs> so that was in 10028. And then we also uh, took a different data set, uh, 10005. And here, not only do they supply picked particles, but also the subset of particles from which um, the writers of the, the paper, Liu et al, uh, created the volume um, that they uploaded to EMDB. Uh, so what we did is we, we ran 2 the classification before and without our centering and with our centering. Um, and then we built a 3D model from those 32,000 particles provided um, by the authors. And we built our own model from the from 43,000 uh, particles that we were able to get after 2D classification. And the reason that we were able to get more, uh, more inliers is just that we kind of, we corrected the problem uh, with the shifts that caused, you know, maybe two projection images or maybe a shifted projection image that kind of cut off, cut off half of it, uh, which would cause it to be thrown out as an outlier. Okay, and then running, we ran the reconstruction from all 32,000, from all 43,000, and we were actually able to get a better uh, resolution from our after centering. Um, okay, I will note that Leo et al. Uh, got a better resolution than both of these in their reconstruction, but we did the minimum, meaning we didn't try to do any post-processing in order to improve um, upon our results because all we really wanted to do was to compare the, the resolution um, that we would get with the centering and without the centering. And we didn't, we weren't trying to get a, the best resolution possible, you know, regardless of what we were doing. So we didn't do any post-processing CTF correction or anything like that, a CTF refinement. Okay, so those were our experiments. Um, so to conclude, what we did here is we, we started from the alignment, um, but we ended up with more of a centering scheme. Um, and what we suggest is just to add it somewhere in the pipeline um, before class averaging, maybe even as part of particle picking. Um, and we think that this will, first of all, reduce the runtime of the 3D reconstruction, um, possibly also reduce the runtime of class averaging because 
in class averaging, um, we won't have to refer to as many shifts um, as necessary right now, as many possible translations. And, uh, and in addition, also um, improve resolution because we're able to use a few more um, projection images, the ones that would have been thrown out as outliers, just because we weren't able to do them article picking. So this is our paper describing all this. Um, and, okay. and if there are any questions, I'd be 